I'm Steve Farmlow, the host of the Top Gun Show. What I've prepared for you is a short three-part mini-series documentary on the indirect sales channel in telecommunications. I've created this to benefit all of the constituents of the channel. Why? What I've discovered is that more education is needed to take better advantage of the benefits of the indirect sales channel. We will explore the past, the present, and the future of the channel, as well as some of the best practices. Whether you are a provider or carrier, or if you are a sales agent or partner, if you're a value-added reseller, or if you're an end user, I would like this series to increase your understanding of the many benefits of the indirect sales channel. Enjoy, and thanks for watching. Since the beginning of time, people have had the insatiable desire to communicate with each other for a variety of reasons. It is the nature of humankind to communicate, share stories, notify each other of danger, celebrate life's moments, and in business, inform customers of our value proposition. We all have a story to tell. Communication technologies are the vehicle we all use to get our stories told. These technologies have evolved as mankind has evolved. We started out sharing smoke signals across the valleys. This was followed by the Pony Express, Telegraph, Telegram, US Mail Service, the landline telephone, and now cell phones. In my lifetime, we have gone from pink while you were out message notes to instant forms of communication such as SMS texting and all forms of social media messaging. While the technology has changed dramatically, the basic need has been to stay connected. People and businesses have a strong desire to be connected. Staying connected is the common denominator. Because the work from home environment is here to stay, the need to be connected is very likely more important today than ever. The world is moving fast. We are bombarded with messaging. We are also inundated with threats such as cyber attacks, ransomware, and data hijacking. However, the technologies continue to evolve in order to continue to satisfy that insatiable desire to staying connected with each other. In this documentary, we will explore the foundation of the telecommunications industry with a focus on the indirect sales channel. We will find out what it is, when it started, and why it started. We will also come to the realization that there is much more to come. Everything has not yet been invented. There are new technologies and new opportunities on the horizon that will simply blow your mind. The Top Gun Show has provided the business community with over 500 interviews of the industry leaders and the top guns in the telecommunications industry. With over several million total episode views, the Top Gun Show has brought together the names, faces, personalities, organizations, and technologies that make it all happen. Now, we pull it all together to give you the secrets and keys to success you need to take advantage of the continuous waves of opportunity that roll in. Together, we will discover the untapped potential in the telecommunications industry through the indirect sales channel. We have brought together some of the industry icons to share their past, present, and future thoughts. So sit back, relax, and take it all in. Common sense tells you that the channel is where it's at. We were like on a mission to help other people get to the promised land. 
and we built a channel based on that. You have to step back and say, am I doing things that are awesome in the channel? Would somebody write a story about me? The TSB communities are becoming larger than life themselves. Don't forget that it's people trying to communicate. That's all that this is. When you look at what's important, it's always comes down to two things, right? You gotta have the trust and you gotta have the relationships. If you don't have that, you're not gonna succeed in this space. The current state of the indirect sales channel is going through a once in a generation shift. Despite the fact that 75% of the products sold in every industry, not just in technology, are sold indirectly. If a buyer's watching this right now and he's not connected to a carrier agnostic sales partner, how should he find one? They start by calling us, right? Because we have the largest network of channel partner and cover the entire gamut of expertise when it comes to technology. This is, I think, what differentiates us. Not only do we have deep expertise in the telecommunication space, but we bring the mobility space as well as the SaaS solutions or cloud, the infrastructure as a service solution. And we even dabble in energy. So um, we have channel partners that excel and have deep, deep expertise in each of these area. And we're a hundred percent channel company. So everything we do is through channel, but given our marketplace, an end customer can come, browse, see who our uh, advisors are. They can see expertise in specific technology, and they can always call us, and we'll match them to the channel partner that services their area and has the expertise they're looking for. I was reading recently that 50% of buyers within businesses are millennials. How do millennials work? They want to go online. They want to do their research, right? They want to enter the buying process uh, 60% further than, you know, the prior gener generation. So they go online, they can do the research. And, and this is what differentiates us as well, because all of this is available on the marketplace. The channel has been growing in maturity for a very long time. There's some, there's some amazing companies out there that have got it figured out, right? They're, these companies are over 20 years old. Um, you know, they're backed by significant amounts of capital. If I'm one of these companies that's trying to understand the market more, and I would go out and do my research. I would encourage um, that company to look at some of the top uh, TSBs in the market. Those are great organizations that have um, a very good track record and they have a very significant base of sales partners that are capable of leading almost any engagement across technology that is that is needed. There's so many people in the channel that are anxious to help customers and meet them where they are. Do your research, make sure that you connect with a partner that understands maybe your vertical or your horizontal, understands the type of solutions you need, and then connect with them that way. Knowing what you know now, what would you have done differently? We're top performers, so we're, we're self-critical. I want, would have probably made in more investments or profits back into the business sooner in the business. And I think we could have reinvested sooner and earlier. Uh, we could have created more wealth in the end. And I think for us, if we had brought on talent earlier, it would have helped us to grow. It would have reduced the stress on Rick and I. And Rick and I could have found roles that I think were, were less pressure because it was difficult it's yeah. like saying well if you knew you were going to get dealt that uh you know that 21 would you have put on a hundred or a thousand dollar well we didn't know we actually had the winning hand we wanted to build something that was um built to last the other thing i would say is we, if we could have hired a consultant sooner that would have given us the information we had once we got that consultant which we did hire it eight years into the business that is when they said, hold on, young fella, you don't, you're not ready to build a strategy. You don't have a team. You don't have a management team. And we needed to get the right people with the right capabilities on the bus. I think the people really helped us. The Jays, the Carols, the Chucks, you know, um, the Danis, they really, really helped us shape uh, what we had. But honestly, I don't think without that team, the two of us had enough yeah. knowledge or experience or time 
remember this was our first company. I mean, besides the lemonade stand and a few other unmentionables we won't talk about. Um, uh, that's, this was our first legitimate company. This was it. This is our first and big baby. If we had done that four years in the business, guess what? We would have been four years further along when we sold the company. There's no doubt in my mind. Or we might not even have sold the company. It might have been a billion dollar company at that point. I know we did the best we could do. I know we did what we thought was right. We, to this day, loved that business and loved everybody in it. Data is the new currency. I think analytics are still very critical. Companies like ours, maybe you've been an expert in security, but you haven't really asked about contact center. Maybe this customer that you're working with is a contact center behemoth, but you've never really asked them about their network connectivity and how they can be better you know, with SD-WAN. So I think that security and and contact center and, and voice and networking, all those data analytics um, really that are pertinent to those individual partners. I think that is critical. This is a great question for me, Sam Ariaka, because we've really embraced the notion of you know, building world-class portals and tools. And so I think the next evolution is really giving partners the ability to co-manage the environment. I think the next evolution is really you know, a state of co-management where obviously they still do all the stuff they've been doing, but, you know, they have the ability to log in and actually see things happening in real time and make adjustments based upon things that they see. We're building those kinds of capabilities. We have a brand new portal. It's called Aperture. It gives our partners the ability to see traffic real time and how it's being optimized into 3,500 different SaaS applications. So they can see it they can control it and they can optimize that traffic. And so I think that's the next evolution is that whole co-management function. And that gets me really excited. The most successful um, uh, providers are, are focusing on a couple key things where they know the partners need help. Uh, digital demand generation programs, support programs, skills, coaching, um, help with hiring, uh, help with identifying hires, help with training hires. They're focused on the problems or opportunities. The non-successful or increasingly non-successful ones are focused on their success. They're saying, oh, I'm going to add another layer of certification. I'm going to add another requirement. I'm going to make my program, which is already so complicated that you couldn't do it without a PhD, a little more complicated and make it a little worse for you to get commission or worse to get a discount. I think that, that refocusing yourself on what the partners need which is simplification and support for the areas they need help. That's what the successful um, ones are doing. And then there's that final little magic, right? They're, they're having fun. They're out there with the partners. You see it. They're in the trenches with them. They're doing campaigns and programs and incentives and just things that are really kind of embracing the channel. You have to step back and say, am I doing things that are awesome in the channel? Would somebody write a story about me? Would somebody brag about me? Most importantly, would someone copy what I'm doing? Because it's so great that they'd want to do it in their company. And the answer for most folks is no. And there's lots of things you could do to encourage better performance and to be unique and different. Um, just need to get some help and do them. In the same way that we've talked about the buyer transforming at the end customer level, the technology partners are evolving as well. And, you know, there are more and more millennials in technology partner organization or even starting um, an advisor uh, business and their patterns are different. You also have to give them the ability to do a lot of this in a self-service fashion. And that's why we've have invested heavily in giving them the self-service tool should they choose to do it themselves. That gives them the ability to work at any point in the day, um, do a ton of research themselves. Technology will not replace 
that assisted sale, which is so important. But the combination of both, so this new hybrid operating model for an advisor is, is key. If you're a company um, that has a business problem that you want to solve with the help of technology, there's a multitude of solutions to choose from. So you've got to make sure first that you find the right solution. That's what a channel partner helps you do. They understand a multitude of solution. They can understand your need and they can figure out what's the best solution for you. So that's the first step. Once you've picked the solution, then you've got to implement it. And the implementation is key for adoption and value realization at the end customer level. That's what a channel partner does. They help you implement it. And then finally, you need to customize it so it meets your exact need, and you need to integrate it with all your other systems so that they operate as a cohesive platform for you. And that's what a channel partner does for you as well. There's no doubt that we are seeing convergence in the technology market. And customers want more and more to work with fewer partners, and they want these partners, these advisors, to bring the entire solution together. This is an important trend for technology advisors to realize, um, and it creates a massive opportunity for, for them to expand outside of their you know, current silo they've operated on historically, expand the number of solutions they provide. This is an important trend for advisors, and we're seeing advisors adopt this, and we love solving the supply chain problem for these advisors that want to work multi category uh, by providing this rich catalog across all of the di different technology. We have talked about the convergence of the channel for over a decade, right? To the MSPs, agents, you know, uh, ISBs, SIs, you know, does everything kind of come together? Um, and right now sitting here, it still feels like a no. Um, it's just not happening. The MSPs are really more clients of the vendor and a little less partners. They're, they're more buying it from the vendor and the agents are really much more of a replacement of your direct seller. There was so much talk about it was gonna come together. And I think at the high level, at the distribution level, when you think of the, the, the App Smarts and Intellisys, TD Cinex, Ingram, right? Kind of lumping them all together, the, the distributors now. Um, I think at a high level, that's coming together, right? You see ScanSource purchasing Intellisys. You hear rumors that another one of the distributors is purchasing one of the solution brokers. So you see that coming together. But at the next layer down, I think you, you still have these tracks within the channel. Um, and I just don't see a lot of convergence still. Got any last minute thoughts that you want to give to sales partners on how to get better? One, uh, start with the MDF program. Uh, market development funds are supposed to be used for market development. Uh, many of the technology solution broker master agents have not um, necessarily ran that way. The first thing is focus on that MDF plan and that go-to-market plan. Um, the second thing is understand your responsibility. If you are not updating the, uh, the master agent's portal on a regular basis, adding the right data, the right information, if you're unable to reconcile your commissions, if you can't provide simple training for the agents to understand your product, like point the finger at yourself and say, where am I so hard to work with that, that the technology solution broker just isn't bothering? Um, you gotta make yourself easy, easy to work with. From the TSB standpoint, um, I think there's still some need to really think about not taking every solution that comes and narrowing the focus a bit. Um, and for the vendors, not taking every one of the masters, narrowing your focus, pick a couple um, and really, really ride that horse, right? Really invest, really engage, be there, be part of the team. Um, I, I think both sides need to do a little bit more of that. The first thing I would say is don't be arrogant. You can believe that you're the de facto standard and the only thing that people should, you know, sell or you've got a corner on the market um, and the channel will prove you wrong every time. So the channel has long sold the less 
uh, efficient or effective solution for the firm that was easier and better to work with for their customers versus the arrogant firm. So uh, skip the arrogance, um, listen more, go out, do a listening tour, um, have an advisory council, have it run by a third party facilitator. A lot of the programs now for those that are distributed already in the channel are horribly dated. Um, they're not delivering the benefits that partners or new partners want or need. Um, they're not attracting the next generation of partners. They're not attracting the right people, the right partners. Um, and they're blaming declines on performance in those programs on market conditions or, oh, the partners are this or, oh, the partners are that. It's not what's wrong. It's, you know, point the finger at yourself and say something was wrong with my program, my solution, um, and just go and look at it and, and make sure that it's making sense. So what's my parting tip for sales partners? Specialize. Um, it's very difficult to go ahead and, and set yourself apart from everybody else unless you have a set of knowledge or skill that's very specialized. For an end user, open mind. Really take a look and leverage and how can a channel approach help you. For master agents, get it together. It's the race to zero. I just really think that the value has been taken out of that model and it shows. For suppliers, trust. Trust in the channel and be much more strategic in how you react with the channel. That's what I would advise. Be who you are. Be authentic to who you are. This is not about telecom technology or anything else. Whatever you do, you know, uh, make sure you are committed to it, sales partners or whatever you're doing. Be honest about it and 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 know who you are and work and 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 embrace that. You know and don't try to be something you're not. So it's, it's, you know, some more simple things that I would tell my kids really, um, which is, is just, you know, I mean, you gotta, you gotta be passionate about something, have fun doing it. Something that's worth doing is worth doing. Well, people communicate just like they did when they were what, paint, painting the pictures on the caves. Then they went to smoke signals. Then they put up telegraph poles. There's nothing new here. Don't forget that it's people trying to communicate. That's all that this is. Man, Rick and I never did this because we were super excited about, you know, you know, bits and bytes. We yeah. did it because of it was, what propelled us was our friendships and our relationships and the drive and all this. I would just tell the sales partners out there to, you know, I always talk to them about showing up, which is really important, but understanding that they have big influence over a new kind of buyer. You know, just make sure you put yourself in that position with your customer. If you're not dating your customer, somebody else is. So you should be talking to them with everything from, you know, cloud services and connectivity to the hardware that's supporting those things. Really, really important. This hybrid distribution model is here to stay. The TSB communities are becoming larger than life themselves. They are not just master agents from what they were once known. Uh, they're not just in the telco space anymore. We're seeing distribution itself. I, I wrote a report last year called uh, our distributors, the future of distribution. We're seeing different levels when more companies now are distributing bits than they are atoms as software eats the world. These technology solution brokers are putting together larger, more expansive solutions than ever before. And they're working with partners. My opinion, obviously the North American market's very mature. Like that traditional telco agent route to market is, is very mature. I think what we're continue to see is more of a global approach. We've seen it right in, in the UK, we've seen it some throughout continental Europe. I think we'll continue to see that um, above and beyond just Europe. You know, they're starting to, we're starting to see signs of life down in Latin America and South America where this, this agent model is going to continue to mature. When you look at what's important, it's always comes down to two things, right? You got to have the trust and you got to have the relationships. If you don't have that, you're not going to succeed in this space, I can teach them the technology, right? I can't go build 20 years of relationships overnight. I'm always going to lean towards the person that has those relationships and then teach them everything else.
And then also I would ask, you know, officially on the record on your show that if and when, and I'm not saying it's anytime soon, I'm not insinuating that, and I'm not putting pressure on you, but if and when that jacket gets retired, I think we both know who has ownership. I don't care who else has been on the show, how many times, you know, I've got a genuine love for that jacket. So that's how I leave you. Well, I need to update my will then and leave you my jacket. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they can hey, have the desk. Up. They can have the desk, the headset, all that. I want the jacket. All right. Done. Done yes. deal. Done deal. Yes.